this Green Deal is not just legislation or an abstract notion, but it is a particular value, a value expected of the new order that will actually affect every sector of the economy. It will also affect, in many aspects and dimensions, the food and uh, agro industry. Today we are talking about the value that it is supposed to result in. What is it in particular? To feed the world, to save raw materials. So in other words, we are talking about making sustainable production um, present, omnipresent. Today, within our panel, among the panelists, we will try to answer the question of how to um, arrange the entire sector of food and agriculture, perhaps from scratch, perhaps in a comprehensive manner, so that on the one hand internally, but on the other hand also um, in the relationship with the environment broadly understood, taking into account all the links in the chain of value and creation uh, are addressed. I'm Anna Rechik, and it is my pleasure to be moderating today's discussion. Next to me, I have guests um, who will provide uh, the lead to this discussion. Um, I am not going to use any uh, obvious order in welcoming Małgorzata Bojańczyk, uh, who is uh, the director of the Association of Sustainable Agriculture in Poland, ASAP, Mr. Grzegorz Obrodziak, who represents the meat industry, Good Valley. Good afternoon, and Mr. Jaroslav Wankowicz, who represents the potato production sector. Farm Price Poland, um, Jaroslav Wankowicz, is responsible for raw material supply chain in Farm Price Poland. Okay, so without further ado, Małgorzata, I shall start with you. Let us try to define the goals of the Green Deal and in particular of the strategy from farm to fork. And by doing this, we would like to understand the rationale behind turning sustainable production massive, omnipresent, and uh, how does this relate to ecological production? Where are we today? To what an extent uh, the goals uh, as stipulated by the strategy are attainable? You mentioned food um, security. Well, that's the main point of the Food to Fork strategy that supports uh, the European Green Deal and is a, the main strategy as far as um, agriculture is concerned. The implementation of the strategy is not going to be easy. We need to take um, a look at it from many angles. We need a stable, stable regulation uh, solutions, but also we need to have a complex view uh, of the entire production uh, chain. And of course, for farmers, we need to take into account uh, profitability and also a change in their uh, mentality. Now, speaking about the goals, uh, I would say that there were a few uh, objectives, but I would rather refer to the two main indexes that here in the Polish conditions, but also in Europe, uh, proved to be controversial. One of them is lowering by 50% uh, the application of uh, the plant production uh, substances. So as Poland, we actually have a different starting point, 2.13 kilograms per hectare. I use when we look at Western countries, it is around four, or in the Netherlands, 8.8. .8. So this is the volume that we are talking about, but it is worth paying attention to the fact uh, about the, the calculation um, that is going to be used by the European Commission. The guidelines were shared when strategic plans were shared. It was in December 2020 the Commission presented how it is going to measure. This is the harmonized risk index. So it is not only going to take the volume into account, so it's not the reduction by half, but it's also the, the security profile. So for the period 2011 to 2013 versus 2018-19, we already had minus 22% in terms of the use of those uh, substances. Now, 
In order to get to this main goal, so food has safety, all these um, substances have to be used, but it has to be done reasonably. And in order for it to be possible, we need to have precise farming. Then we also have ecological farming and the goal it tells about 25% of preserving of the area. Now it is uh, three and uh, a half percent. This is considered as a chance for small and medium-sized uh, farms, but we don't have so many uh, that are smaller than five hectares. Well, this kind of farming is less uh, efficient, uh, quite costly, and not every farm looking at its economic goals for the future will want to shift to this kind of production, ecological production. So the question arises again of food safety and uh, ensuring this area for the production of food. And well, here we are looking for uh, the chances that offer themselves in sustainable farming that on the one hand will be able to produce uh, the expected volume of food. It is also the one that uh, or relies on long-term profitability. It has its social goals to it and it constitutes a compromise between conventional farming and ecological farming. I think I will now turn to Grzegorz and Jarosław, who represent the producers, but the farming producers, who most of all the farmer, and partly also um, the food processing entities. Those new quality assumptions of the from farm to fork strategy and sustainable production, um, how do they refer to the benefits for the entire value creation chain? Where can we see um, the increase in this value today? And where can we expect the, the greatest increase in uh, value in the future? So what for? Okay, so increase in value for whom? For the company manufacturing or for the consumer or for the society in general? No, I'm, I'm talking about this global approach. Okay, um, so the plan based on Green Deal has very ambitious goals to it that are supposed to be beneficial to all of us in order to build a more sustainable farming using less resources but producing more so that we can provide um, the food for the growing population. So that's in nutshell, of course, um, that's respecting the environment, to, to respect the environment. Now, traditional approach is understood as understanding that everything that is ecological um, and more modern is also more costly. Now, the manufacturers have the task of finding such technologies that the costs can be compensated by a greater profit. Yeah, and I'm not going to put in here. So is it really about improving the quality of the food itself, or is it more about environmental impact or about the economy? This is actually all the three together because um, farming, producing food, affects the environment. It has always been the case and always will be. We are here at the verge of producing in cooperation with the environment. We are using resources, water, uh, the, the soil. We are impacting the quality of air. It is all interconnected. And today, which aspect um, is well resounds stronger? All of those. In order for us to be able to produce in a manner even more friendly to the environment and saving the resources, we have to do that in a modern way, but at the same time, we need to uh, obtain such margins on the sales so that it is profitable, because without this motivation, manufacturers will not be able to attain those goals. And this is one of the challenges in shaping both uh, the awareness of decision makers who are going to decide on, on particular detailed guidelines um, that will make it possible to implement uh, the Green Deal, but also the paradigm of thinking of the manufacturer will have to change for them to start thinking how much uh, of uh, um, an impact they exert on, um, on the environment rather than focusing on their profits. So this will then translate on everything we need to the Can a consumer today feel it? Well, we represent the entire chain, so from, from the field to fork, that's been our assumption for 20 years. We produce 
both plants and uh, feed and, uh, and animals and biomass that we uh, use and food um, meat production as well. So what we offer to our client is a uh, climatically neutral product. We use biogas from plant biomass, so it's so controlled. Uh, the customer is in a position to use a QR code to actually see how the product has been manufactured. And additionally, it is a uh, product that is not based on using antibiotics. It's, again, one of the assumptions of the Green Deal to reduce the use of antibiotics by half. And then when translating it onto the sales, this is just the beginning of the educational path. The sales of such a product that costs 20, 30 percent more than usual start setting in slowly, but this is still a niche. It is but a few percent of the consumer market, the consumer that consciously selects this kind of a product. What will Jarosław tell us about is from the point of view of plant production. Well, when we talk about plant production, or generally speaking about running um, a production plant or production farm and sustainable production, we need to take all the three factors into account, so economy, environment, and social aspects. Aspect. If one of those is missing in the entire jigsaw puzzle, then we cannot really talk about the production being sustainable. That's the way it is. Now, when it comes to to um, deciding on what is going to be the main driver. I believe that this will be the climatic changes that we've been observing. So everything changes all around with big emphasis put on the environmental aspects. But this will, of course, affect the uh, remaining ones as well. So that will affect the environmental aspect and the economic aspect of the profitability of production, as well as the social ones of the acceptance for such a production without this active participation of consumers or without their awareness that we need to be changing in this direction, that we need to be changing our production and try to balance um, all the factors, what can impact the final price. We, we we can simply not Thank put the jigsaw puzzle um, together with, without the uh, conscious participation on the part of the consumer. We talked before and we know that you have an, an interesting view on competitiveness. Can a product uh, resulting from sustainable production or the manufacturer using such uh, standards, should it be a criterion of competitiveness? Is it one today and should it become one? Well, today I'd say that it uh, was uh, the criterion of competitiveness, but it is an aspect that should not be uh, an aspect of competitiveness. There are associations, there are international unions. We also have an association in Poland, uh, Polish Sustainable Production Association, whose main task is to support the development of production that is sustainable, but not on the basis of competitiveness. Big competitive companies in a given sector cooperate together in order to develop uh, sustainable food production uh, based uh, on the, the foundation that is other than competitive. Because the standards are high, the costs of production are high, and those costs later find their reflection in the price. So how to play fair? Is this, is this fair play today? Well, depending on the industry or depending on the product and time, well, of course, sometimes will be more and sometimes will be less. Fair, but in order to be fair, you need to be transparent. So the best uh, idea is to ensure full business transparency, as Gregor said. If, for example, you can trace the entire production in the internet using a QR code, then well, there can be nothing better than this. Full transparency, so that those who wish to verify it can confirm that it is fair. Maybe there will be some who claim against it, but when we have the full acceptance on the part of the society, then we can talk about fair play. Małgosia. Speaking of competitiveness, you need to refer to the consumer. What is the potential of the market today in terms of sustainable production? And I'm interested who and in what conditions is ready to pay more? And another question, um, do they have to pay more? And if pay more, then for what? For what kind of gain? Thank you very much for this question, because the consumer has been mentioned uh, already, and this is the main factor. 
that also supports sustainable farming. I'm going to explain why, but I would like to briefly re refer to what has been said here, mostly about the transparency, so the greenwashing and uh, what we know that it is very important that we can prove somewhere that this production is really sustainable, that it protects the climate and the environment indeed. And here, sustainable uh, food production should be subject to a debate. We should be speaking in a single uh, voice in the entire production and uh, responsibility for food production. Then no, we will know what it is and how to keep on operating. So we need to have this speak in the unison. And when we talk about a consumer, our association together with Accenture in June this year prepared a report, sustainable uh, food in Poland, within which uh, we focused on the consumer perspective. Consumers wish to have access to sustainable food. Three-fourths of Poles declared that they would like to purchase such products. Interestingly, 73% of consumers are in a position to pay 20% more for such a product. The same percent, so 73% uh, pay attention to to the um, local nature of the, um, uh, of the production. And that's our strength because we have strong local brands in Poland. The companies shorten supply chains very much, which is um, the, the benefit of our country. If 20% more, more then for what kind of a benefit, right? benefit. The consumer wants to buy their needs, so to speak. So the consumer becomes more and more aware, uh, conscious, they know what it means for a product to be produced, respecting the environment. And this is what they want to pay for, for their clear conscience. And the market, which results from the studies we carried out, has a chance to um, be worth uh, over 60 billion zlotys, which constitutes a big potential um, to fill the gap between the conventional food production market and the ecological food production market. The ecological one is now 0.5%, so we can see a lot of opportunity here. Grzegorz, does the consumer have to pay more? And it's a tricky question, and I'm going to tell you why. There are two dimensions to it that I wanted to ask you to refer to. On the one hand, does it have to cost more from the point of view of increasing quality and also increasing the level of meeting the customer's need? So does it have to does it have to mean a higher price? On the other hand, does the consumer have to pay more for food that is available in the market? So given that in the market we have an offer from local production, let's say, production that has ambitions of being uh, available on a massive sustainable scale. But on the other hand, we have products and raw materials too, we are going to hear about the broad market, that are available from beyond the European Union, not just from the European Union. And at this point, uh, the consumer has their choice. So it's tricky. How will the consumer relate to this? I mean, how to support uh, the competitiveness of the Polish um, food industry, what kind of instruments can be used to the same? We've touched upon a few important issues as for the consumer, and then first of all, as we've heard it in the main room today, the consumer should understand that food is too cheap, and that has to be repeated, it has to be made clear, especially when you look at meat, I don't know if you um, are aware that this is about the only product that costs as much today in wholesale as it did 20 years ago, I don't know of any other product in, or that would cost the same um, as 20 years ago. This is the price that is lower than a um, well, kilogram of parsley. So something is wrong here uh, when you take into account uh, if you compare how complicated or non-complicated it is to produce meat versus parsley. So food is too cheap, and that is why our lifestyle is not healthy. When you look at the food production, meat production in Europe, 60, 70 kilo is consumed by a person a year. In the US, it's 125, and uh, dietitians say that we should eat 35 
kilos of meat a year, and that should be enough. So we should eat less and be more picky, select uh, the meat of high quality. So if we lead to the reduction of consumption and adjusting it to our needs, and secondly, if we led to the reduction of food waste, because actually you waste 30% of food globally, these are numbers that are well known, then we'll, we will already make the consumer spend less, even if they pay a higher price per unit that they buy. And on the other hand, at the same time, if we reduce the food waste scale, then by 30%, we also reduce the, the whole carbon footprint connected with food production and also utilizing the wasted produce and the packaging. So we are back to what I've tried to make clear from the beginnings, to education of the consumer and attempt to change the paradigm. Do I need so much, really, or can I afford to pay attention to quality and consciously select such foods, such produce, that um, match my perception of the world, the world as I would like to see it in two, two decades to come. So we are talking about conscious consumer that will be making these decisions, taking these decisions, okay, I will eat less but pay more for the quality, and I eat less because I don't need to eat more. But on the other hand, we have a consumer who relies on uh, the old food pyramid that we still remember from our childhood, my childhood, or from a few years back. We know that the row of the meat well, was positioned much, much higher than today. So this routine approach can still prevail and can still make the consumer search for an offer that will be cheaper and uh, will make it possible for him or her to consume as much meat as uh, so far. So how to support the Polish supply in this sense? I will refer to this. You might not remember it. But I remember the times when I was a child and I used to eat far less meat than today. So this systemic change um, is happening. When we got a bit wealthier in the 90s, we, we used to buy more. We started to buy more because we could afford it. So we are returning to um, the levels from the 80s when we ate, ate meat twice a week. But now back to how to build profitability for food producers in Poland, um, because this is what it is about. Well, we know that we have very segmented um, farming, 1,300,000 farms. That's amazing. Uh, um, in Europe, similar is the case in Romania only. And now what we want to do is to get to this scale that would make it possible to make investments and, well, that would enable knowledge access on how to raise standards to, to become um, a more sustainable, use digital technologies, be more precise, uh, do anything possible in order to, to turn more ecological and sustainable. So um, some incentives should be used that would persuade um, farmers into cooperation so that those very small farms of several dozen hectares uh, would be able to talk about uh, common uh, purchases, common technologies, so co-sharing, really sharing um, the technological resources that they would have at their disposal, and making sure together that they get connected to um, a local knowledge center. I know that Good Valley and Yarosov does that. Um, so we, we, we meet farmers in order to make them knowledgeable, to teach them, and uh, then to translate it into actions and support uh, the farmers in selling the produce. So it's cooperation, sharing, and reducing the consumption of resources. Jarek, what sort of barriers do you see as far as this gradual moving on to sustainable farm production, uh, agricultural production? What are they about? Well, there are uh, a few barriers. In my opinion, the major one the biggest one, uh, which prevents us from going to sustainable food production, it's a mental one. Uh, it's a mental barrier starting with producers, farmers, food manufacturers, all the way to consumers. If we change that barrier, or if we get rid of it, and we all understand that if we stop wasting 30% of food, then uh, 
you know, the, the price could go up 30%. So without wasting 30%, we would pay the same amount. So in this way, we could maintain the same level of expenditures. On the, on the side of farms, well, a lot of changes are being implemented or many elements connected with sustainable farming require scale, require new technologies, uh, require investments. And here we have a certain barrier connected with the size of the farm, but it's a mental barrier again, because it's not like every farmer needs his own solution. Uh, once again, sharing, sharing solutions or ones provided by service givers. This is uh, not well developed in Poland. There is no culture of doing things together and so on. Now, what potential, in your opinion, is there on the side of uh, of farms when it comes to digital technology? What's the attitude of today's farmers towards that? Well, one of the more important elements is digitization, uh, digitalization, which uh, uh, allows us to manage differently than we have. So far, it's still quite a mental barrier. I remember that a few years ago we organized a workshop on barriers to digitalization in farming, and one of the farmers said that uh, he is against it. He's against, you know, sharing data, collecting data, because, uh, well, in connection to today's conference organized by a bank, said, well, you know, if my if my results are not that great, then my financial ranking can be lowered, and I won't get financing. So first, we have to break through this mental barrier and uh, present. Uh, the way it is done in reality, that this credit risk is always estimated anyway, and there is nothing better than doing it in a transparent and fair play manner, because everybody wins, then it's a win-win situation. And that's to wrap things up, uh, basically, uh, what sort of support does Polish farming needs? Uh, I mean here the entire chain, so from production, the individual farmer through food processing, retail and consumers, so that we can have sustainable model in practice. Well, I see three foundations here. Uh, the first is adopting the production to the new consumer needs. In other words, consumer wants to have a product of good quality, product produced locally, which has a uh, low impact on the climate and the environment. So we need to deal with that uh, demand. Then we have the whole business environment uh, and what's happening there. So labeling of products, very important issue, because if a consumer is looking for a sustainable farming product, then it has to be easily recognizable. And it's uh, obviously also a suggestion to retail network so that they can uh, pay attention to that and clearly show us where such products can be found and looking at the profitability of products, but uh, from the perspective of companies which is supported by appropriate uh, service contracts, perhaps sharing margins or providing some tools to reduce costs. And uh, of course, moving on to more sustainable production on the side of the farmer, both when it comes to plant and meat production, because uh, farming should be seen uh, here as a chance, because farming is able to impact the limiting of uh, greenhouse gases by applying uh, appropriate methods. And we as Poland, as well as it has been said here in Poland, we have 1.3 million farms, uh, 1.6 million farmers. Uh, uh, we have uh, very strong local communities, short supply chains, uh, local producers. Uh, we, have, we also have a strategic plan uh, for, for agriculture policy, 25 billion euro assigned to it. Of course, uh, uh, it's very important to spend the money in a, in a smart way because, as we've pointed out as an association recently, if we assign means to support investments that are supposed to uh, support ecological farming and uh, obviously not each and every farm will want to 
move uh, to this type of production, then here we have to find certain certain golden equilibrium. So innovative model based knowledge based on uh, innovation, based on partnership and speaking in a single voice. Definitely. Thank you very much uh, for your discussion, for this uh, very meaty discussion, and thank you very much for your attention.